So we'll start with the terraforming Mars turmoil, which is leading humanity in uncertain times. Uh, this is from Stronghold Games. This expansion uh, lets you get involved in politics and navigate in a changing world. Delegates influence the terraforming committee and global events set to, uh, the path to the future. It also includes new cards and corporations. And this is an expert expansion to Terraforming Mars. Turmoil is played together with the main game and may be combined with any other expansion and variant. It adds about 30 minutes to the game length. So I'll be interested to see what it adds to the solo play because if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll see that I posted that I tried out the solo game of, of Terraforming Mars n with no expansions to it uh, this week. And A, it's been about a year since I've played, but I did terrible. A, because I need better strategies, but there's so many cards already in the deck that you can struggle to find the right combos and you're forced to terraform everything by yourself with so many rounds that you can ignore the scoring, but there's so many cards that are score-based versus terraform-based that it's hard to get a good engine going that you're used to making for that are point-based. So, interested to see what this adds, if it adds uh, some different corporations that make the terraforming better, or anything like that. I expect to see a lot of cards. It does talk about the contents right here, that we should expect to see some tiles, uh, some smaller boards, some rules, of course, cards. So, let's bust it open. Now it does say, that I received this in a trade from someone. I did not actually back it on Kickstarter. Uh, some enjoy backing stuff on Kickstarter, some don't. That's completely up to you what you like to do. But they did have the Kickstarter copy. So I don't know if the Kickstarter copy had anything extra or if they just happened to buy it on Kickstarter at that price. And then now this supposedly being in stores, I would assume. I'd have to verify that. But all I know is this was Kickstarter based. So, nice, simple, small box. Of course, I probably will not keep the box as all of this will go into the main Terraforming Mars game box I have. So we got some stacks of cards already coming out. I may have to adjust that so it doesn't change the lighting as fast. But, uh, we got Ziploc full of bits and such which I'll go through. We got a little rule book. Got some different boards and a simple little cube. And of course the box. So I'll set that to the side. I'll start with the rule book. As you know, I like to kind of see what's in the rule book, how it shows it off, how easy the rules are to to read. So first thing I notice is even though the front cover wasn't the easiest to read, some of this bottom stuff white on a multicolored background, we immediately switch to a very neutral background color, black text, which is a lot easier on the eyes to read. Um, as you can see, it talks about the board pointing out spots on the board. Uh, intro to this expansion set up real quick, pointing out things you may see on the cards. Uh, a replacement tile for some of the milestone stuff. So, rules and game components. Granted, there's a lot of text in this rule book and in the game in general, if you're, if you're used to the main game. They're not very picture dependent within the rule books. They do show off the icons typically, but you're going to see a lot more text and reading going on with this game looks like some new phases that it puts into the game uh, there's a little quick thing about solo uh, and it mentions there's a couple of things we'll have special cases um, list the components on the back here I kind of would have liked if they did a full page on the components or showed okay 
uh, say the policy tiles look like this and have a little picture of it and so on. So then you're not attempting to guess what they are based on just the name. So that's my only, I don't want to call it gripe, but thing I'm used to or in, like to see in rule books that I'm not seeing here. So let's see what these boards are then. Okay, so this is a little punch board, which we'll pump, punch in a moment. I see two different boards right here. Uh, it looks like... So... Uh, I think both of these boards get added to the game. Looks like a space for different things going on. Uh, s s card stacks in, in these, and then rules right on it. So that, that's at least helpful. Very straightforward, using the same icons from the base game, with it looks like possibly a couple new icons added, which was in the rule book at least. And then these boards, let's see, one, two. So five boards, so that's five players. These are all updated and changed. Recess player boards, which, to be honest, may even toss out the boards I had in the standard version because they were just printed sheets. I don't want to call them cards because they're quite a bit bigger, but it's a card, basically a card stock that was just single layer printed, not a uh, double layer with recess pieces to hold both the count area and your resources itself. So I do like the difference in that. And this flips um, from the base game, if, if you've seen that those cards I was just talking about have where you keep track in the... I'm not sure if it was still laid out like this. I think at least the bottom row was flipped. Because I remember playing the other night where I was shifting things down low and counting at the above. So you may have been counting in the middle. Resources top and bottom. But now they're all top, top, bottom, bottom. So it looks symmetrical as opposed to mirrored across itself. Um, but I do like how how vibrant the, the back layer of these boards are, and then it's really easy to tell where everything sits in it. And you have a 10 spot, 10, 10s and 20s spot for counting resources. So that'll be nice. Which I'll show these off on the the close-up detail cam in a, in a moment as well. So let's switch over to that cam now, and then I'll do the punches and cards and su such. See if the light's been adjusting on things, because when I put the cards down, it started auto-adjusting the light. Yeah. Let me go check that setting, because I don't like it adjusting too much on me. I like it to be consistent. Let's try that now. Okay, no change. That'll help us out so we can see stuff more consistently. It won't change based on reflections. So here's that single single punch board. Um, as you can see, six tiles and a replacement thing right here. Well, it's not truly a replacement. It's basically you cover a spot on the board because it's changing it when you use this expansion in the game. Let's start punching, see how it goes. I'm gonna pause the music and then do the first punch next to the microphone so we can hear how crisp it possibly is. So decently crisp. Um, the These are a little tight in there as I pushed these first few the tabs didn't want to release all completely. So some people like that, that it's more completely on there. But in my experience, the tighter that tab, the more prone to tearing it is. So I'm going to have to be very careful with the rest of the tab on it now. It just means it's going to be a more visible tab after you've taken it off. It's a small enough punch board, I'll go and finish it off. You know, sometimes I only show a few punches. See, it's going single tab and then double on the back side. Doesn't want to release as fast. But if you do it in the see how that wanted to tear, but the fortunate thing is it wanted to tear 
in the direction of the extra portion of the board and not in that physical piece that you use and keep. So that was interesting that they tab this side and this side, even though they're the same shape. So what that's shown is the design and layout. That's more in the programming side and that the program itself like, prefers tabbing left and right on this board or in some cases it might be considered top and bottom and you can see this board was tabbed to a separate board so they did a bigger sheet of it cut it out laser or, or did a die die stamp press down with knife's edge that went down on it and then they pulled all of them broke up the single sheet put it in the box and so on so on so always interesting ways to look at it from the engineering side of it too because for those who don't know i'm a design engineer and so i like to see uh, how things are made how uh, and if i would i would have done it the same different if i understand the process behind it okay so we got two decks of cards and like you know i like to check if we have that quick release on it so I'm seeing it should have something because you can see a line across that. So let's see if I can find the end of it. You can at least tell that these are layered. There it is. So it was centered. And that's a very thin plastic, easy to tear and loose enough that you wouldn't have to take a knife to it too much. So like you would expect, just like the base game, same art on the back to match certain decks. Um, a blank card, blank card of those types of decks. I guess if you need to replace something, looks like we got a corporation card. Uh, another co corporation and another corporation. So we got three new corporations. wonder how they affect uh, playing solo. I'll have to dig into that more. Uh, we got five cards with this back on it. Um, definitely a new back that's not in the base game. So that's definitely going to be turmoil specific. Uh, it looks like each one, almost all of them have different symbols at the top. They're probably very kind of political themed in nature because that is the theme of this whole expansion. And then we got these cards, which this back is based on the back of the main deck of cards. Uh, okay, so you have kind of more like a promo company card that isn't you're not, not really going to use during the game. I guess you could, but there'd be no reason to it because there's no buying power to it. Um, this is basically just Stronghold Games. That's who made the game. So I need, I'll set that aside with the blanks because you don't want to mix that into the deck. Unless there's a special rule for it. Because you can see it on top of it. I guess it's still kind of just extra or it can fill out the game decks. And then of course we're going to have more cards for the main deck. Oh, interesting. That's for zero cost. So basically you're gonna pay three to keep that card unless you've drawn it for free somehow and you get to use a card action that has already been used this generation again. That's pretty powerful. A little surprised they did that for that cheap. So some energy based cards. A steel call card uh, lawsuit. Interesting name for that one. Political alliance straight up. Saturn surfing. Okay, so let's see what's in the other deck. It also seems to have that quick tear. I didn't even have to fully search for that tear. It's just a little pressure with the thumb pulled the deck. It looks like we got some reference cards of the different party actions, political. Um, a little unfortunate that there's only two of those that I see. I really prefer. Like at this point, that's saying 
you're making two or three people share one card. It's not one card for everyone or one each. It's kind of a weird middle ground. I prefer everyone gets their own. So then you don't have to ask for the rule book or ask someone to pass something just to read a rule. Um, but that's my opinion. You don't have to agree. And then, of course, we got another Stronghold Games card. I'll put the other one. And we got another corporation. So, pull those aside. Make sure all the corporations go together. And another one. Quite a few corporations in this deck. That text is a little hard to read. Oh, I'm putting these. I'm s offset today. No one said anything. Oh well, my fault. Yeah, that text white with that beige background is hard to hard to read. It's not my favorite, especially since a lot of these other ones have a more gray blue, very lighter background with the dark lettering. Okay, we got more of these political, I guess, straight up turmoil specific cards. Quite a few of them. There's an AI research right there. Moral movement. Separatists. There. Got some aerial lenses, a pants delegate. Martian Media Center. Interesting. PR office. Always need that. Public celebrations. Gotta keep the people happy. Recruit. Need more recruits. Wildlife dome. Yeah, you're going to need some wildlife if you're going to go terraform a planet. Not quite a zoo, but it's a place you can sustain them. And vote of no confidence. Uh, hopefully I don't have to use that type of card and put a, a no confidence in this game. I'll have to try it out and see how well it goes for me. No guarantee either way. But like I said, I was a little on the fence with the solo mode of the base game. Hopefully there's enough cards to get this in, or I need to look up and see if there's like a way to cut the deck and take out certain cards that are more solo proficient. Let's see what came in the bags. Of course we had this plain white cube. Basically another tracker cube, I bet, goes on. Probably like this. It's like, what seat are you supporting or something? I don't know. We'll see. Once I learn the rules. Okay, and the back. It looks like just more clear plastic cube. Oh, nope. I was about to say cubes, and I was about to be very wrong. These are actually... So, based on the a lot of the same colors from the base game, plus an extra, it looks like. A little, like, delicate half-human, like upper torso and head parts. So we got blue, red, yellow, uh, the clear black. These are of course all the translucent. Put these green back. So, I don't know, for some reason once it gets the black, I don't like to call it black when it's clear because it's an in between. And then we got a flat gray. These are probably more of a neutral a filler, maybe it, no one claims it, but it still fills a, a seat or a spot as a blocker. We'll see what happens. Don't know, it's hard to tell. Very simple, straightforward. Of course, not a lot to show. It is an expansion and not a full game. But like I said, so, well, we'll probably have time for something to open some another one, which of course we do. And so I'll probably pack this up. Um, I'm not going to pack it into the base box yet, we'll pull that off. I'm just going to put it straight back in to the box with what it came with to show doing a, a general shake test, which, you know, I like to do. It did not have 
any kind of insert. But then again, a lot of expansions don't have inserts because either they expect you to put it in the base box or the box is small enough to support it. But of course, being that it came with all these player boards and extra other base boards, it. Oh, and that's why there's two decks. So, if it's going to be hard to see. This deck of cards is a single stack. It's too thick to sit on top of the boards in this box. That's why it came as two separate decks. And, unless you take them out of this Ziploc, which I already commandeered from the other stuff, it's... You're just going to slide around. I'm already taking things out of because all of these were in that before. So, that's not the most beneficial thing. Uh, yeah, so it's a few cards thick. It doesn't like to close the box all the way. Of course, we can do the shake test. It doesn't make a huge difference because I won't keep it in this. But for those who care, that's how I had to store it for now. Of course, you may want to get a couple more Ziplocs to separate those things better. But it does keep it pretty tight because those boards fill the over over half of that box. So there's that balance. It is what it is. So, interested to see what that adds to the game now. If not, it'll be something I can throw to my trade away pile that, and then get something else I can open up for y'all and play.